Hi guys, this is Spook and in today's video I'm going to be going over some of the more complex items within the electrical update for Rust. Now the first item I want to talk about is the electrical branch. Now in a nutshell what it does, you've got an, a main electric input, a main electric output and the branch output which is kind of like sucking power away from the system to do something else. And in this case we've got a switch here from our master battery which turns the circuit on. Ignore that light for a minute. So we've got power in from the switch power out to the OR switch here and then you've got your branch out which it's it's configured to two volts so the power in on this battery which is hooked up to is two so even while this circuit's on I'm siphoning power from this battery down into this battery through the branch now if I I don't know set it to 80 this is going to charge a hell of a lot quicker so you've got 80 power in now but you'll notice that through the light there's only 17 volts at the light so if I put this back down to 2 it should add 78 volts back to this light see so back at 95 so that's kind of how branches work you could branch you could probably branch off into a splitter as well while all while powering something else constantly so that's what the branch does the OR switch is it's got two inputs, it's got A and B. Now it will work on either, it will work on both. So if I turn this master switch off now, which disconnects this battery from the circuit, this battery is still hooked up to this switch, so I can turn that battery on and the light turns on. You can tell by the green. Input B, the B's lit up. Or turn this one on. Input A, because it's coming through the branch, straight into the OR switch. Or I could just turn both of them on. It doesn't really matter. So that's what the OR switch does. Okay, this is an XOR switch. Now, I've wired it up. This is an exact replica of this circuit, but instead of the OR, we've got an XOR. So I'm going to turn it on, and the light will turn on. But now, when you, when you turn this battery one on, the light will go off. If both of your inputs are receiving power, which both of mine are, both of these green lights are on, it will stop power going to, you know, from the output. So if I turn that one off, it will turn on. If I turn that one back on, turn off, this one off, the light will turn on. And that's what the XOR switch does. Now I'd just like to say something before I carry on. Um, the amount of things you can do with electricity so far is very limited. So what have we got? We've got lights, we've got doors, and yeah, that's about it. That's all we can really use. So these things that I'm now talking about, you know, the XOR switches and the, the memory cells and things, they they can't really be used to their full potential at the minute with what's available to us. Um, and as further updates come out, I probably expect them to change how they behave. This is an AND switch, AND switch. Now, in the switch description, it's identical to the OR switch. So a logic gate that allows electrical pass-through of both inputs receives power. Switching between these two, they're exactly the same. So what I've done, I've just wired up this circuit, but instead of a switch, I've used a pressure pad. That's all I've done differently here. So with one input, it doesn't work. I step on the pressure pad to give it the second input, and it works. So I'm not sure if they've got one of these switch descriptions wrong, or that is generally how they're, they're supposed to be, but I don't get why they'd make identical switches and different names and different appearances. Who knows? This is the blocker, the, the blue item. Now I'm going to turn this light on. Now this switch is currently off. So the circuit at the minute is coming from the battery into the switch, out, around into the top of the splitter. The power out is going to the power in on the blocker, straight out the top to the light. Now when I flick this switch, it's going to allow power from the splitter to come round through the switch into the block pass-through section of the blocker, and it will just turn the light off. So the red means there's no power coming in anymore. If I turn this off, the power is going to go straight through and both lights will go green and the light will turn on. So that's what the blocker does. It's essentially a switch to turn something off. 
without having to turn off the master switch which could be powering a lot of other things. Okay now I've been playing with this memory cell for about 50 minutes to an hour and I've, I've built something that works with it and I think I understand what's going on. I've tried to look at other YouTube videos about this item here but I can't really find much. Alright I'll try and explain it very basically. So I've got this circuit here the set and output on the memory cell work as their friends, they work together. And the reset and the inverted output are also friends and they work together. Now, the two sets of friends don't like each other, right? So you turn this on, 31 volts comes out here into the reset, when it, and it saves that charge between reset and inverted output because they're friends. Now, even when that timer goes off, no more voltage is coming out of it, but it's kind of stored it in that memory cell until something's done about it. So we've got 32 volts at the door controller, and your inverted output goes up there, and, you're, and it's holding the charge from the timer. Now as soon as I stand on this pressure pad, the other two friends, Mr. Set and Output, are going to come along and take that charge away. Now as long as I'm standing on here, when that timer goes back around it's going to save this charge between set and output, so the switch is still getting voltage. If I flick that switch off and then back on again, it's going to reset the, um, go back to the first circuit setup. So now the door controller has charge from the inverted output which was given charge by the initial 31 volts from the timer into the reset. But if I stand on here which sucks the power into set and output and jump off, because the timer's tripped it's still sending voltage to the, the, the reset and the inverted output, it's just going to reset it again. But if I stand on here until that timer's off, which is now it's now saved that charge in the set and output the door won't open. It's just kind of like a little it's, it is what it is, it's a memory cell, it saves what, what's what been done to it. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense because yeah. And that is pretty much every electrical opponent gone over. I've made two videos, one in the beginning with the more basic things and one now with the more in-depth things. Now I'd like to reiterate, building things that use memory cells right now is probably not needed because we don't have the end items like lights, door controllers, whatever, to, to fully utilize the capabilities of what this can do. Now I'm sure there's people out there that can build some incredible stuff with these things but it's not my um, my field of expertise really and as more items come out and you play around with these things a little bit more it'll, it'll become clearer and you'll probably be able to set things up in no time in the end and lastly before I go you can now actually stack root combiners they've changed it in the last update so two root combiners can go into one so if I stick that one down there because before it wouldn't let you do it. So if I just get some solar panels quickly, where's the sun? I'll hook these up. Okay, so you've got 40 here, 20 here, combined output 60. And I actually wonder if you can stack them endlessly I'm going to have to blur my video now because I'm not wearing any underwear in the game I'm, I'm fully clothed in real life, don't worry if I stick that one onto here this one onto here. So we've got f 20 plus 40 which would be 60 here, 40 here, so technically this output should be 100. Okay so you, it looks like you can just keep on stacking them. 
But then again, you're going to have 10, 15, 20 solar panels on your roof, and it will be very expensive to make, actually, because they're a lot of high quality to make these items. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, because the video is getting a bit too long now. Thank you for watching. I hope that last one with the memory cell made some sort of sense. Uh, any questions, just ask, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching the video. You know what to do if you like it, and I'll see you next time.